Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you're all well wherever you are and whatever you're up to. I'm Lauren and in this video I wanted to share with you my tips for adding lining to a skirt that doesn't have a lining. And the example that I'm going to base it on is this really cute little a-line skirt here which is the So Over It Ava skirt which comes out of the packet unlined and I'm going to show you how to add a lining in it. So I have added timestamps to this video and if you want to skip straight to just the instructional part of actually how to do it then just hover above the timeline at the bottom of the video and then you can jump to that section. But what I wanted to do first of all was show you the fabric that I'd chosen to make this really cute little sort of festive version and some other fabric options that we currently have in stock at the moment in my shop and they are all available online as well. So they're all jacquard fabrics and they're polyester and they've all got a bit of sparkle and a bit of glitz so they're perfect for this time of year if you want to make a cute little sort of festive party outfit. So I used this really lovely snowball one here which has got a sort of white um, background and then really lovely silver sort of pebbly pattern on it which is woven in because it's a jacquard that's what jacquards are the pattern is sort of woven into the fabric and then we've also got this really lovely teal one which is such a lovely vibrant sort of rich color so it's kind of tealy sort of tealy blue in the background but then it's got some green leaves and then this gorgeous goldy sort of rose gold and warm gold metallic print on it it's not a print sorry pattern because it's a jacquard it's woven into the fabric and it's quite floral there's some leaves in there as well the reverse as you can see is very sparkly and um, so yeah another really lovely option and then we've got one that's got more sort of bluey tones in it so quite silver it's sort of silvery grey and then the textures of the leaves in that one are a really lovely blue colour so another nice option and then the final one that we've got which I also absolutely love it's a bit more abstract and it is a sort of kind of off-white colour as well but then it's got greys and a light blue and then silver in it too so yeah quite a sort of abstract um, design on that one as well so they're all very similar weights and um, the jacquards tend to sort of hold their shape a little bit more. I wouldn't class them as like drapey fabrics and they don't really have any give in them at all. They're really sort of quite kind of firm in that sense. They are good obviously for skirts, so just quite simple skirts. You could make a pencil skirt out of them as well. If the skirt was longer and a bit straighter, you would probably just want to make sure that you had a pleat in it so that you could still walk, just because the fabric's got no give in it at all, really. In terms of dresses, you could make a dress with it as well. And I'm going to be sharing with you our festive window display in the shop very, very soon. And we have used the fabrics in that as well to make some dresses. So we did the by hand London Anna dress. So yes, yeah, dresses that have got a bit more sort of require a little bit more structure to them. So a line style is a good option or if you want like a kind of tulip shape where you want that sort of um, sculpture that shaping of the garment to hold this is really good fabric for it and um, the by hand london elise lex dress is a classic example of that with that sort of fitted with that kind of tulip skirt shape to it but there's you know there's lots of various different dress patterns out there that you could use it for and um, so hopefully you've got so in terms of actually adding the lining into a skirt the example that i've got here as i said it's the so over at ava skirt and it has a waistband that attaches on and then sort of folds over the top. But the method would also work for skirts that have a waistband that's in two pieces as well. The, the order of construction would be the same. I also inserted an invisible zip into this sample here. And when you just sort of follow the instructions exactly of that, so over at Ava's skirt is a centered zip that is, is in, in the skirt or in the instructions, but it's really easy just to insert an invisible zip as well. I do have a separate video that shows you how to insert invisible zips, so I will link to that as well. So in this sample, I have inserted an invisible zip, but as standard, the so over at Ava's skirt has a centered zipper 
in the back with insert inserted with a standard zip as opposed to an invisible one it's really easy just to switch that out and i do have a separate video that explains how to insert invisible zips so then to actually get the lining in you're going to use the same pattern pieces to cut out the front and the back panels out of your lining fabric and your main fabric and you're essentially sort of making two skirts to a certain stage so with your main fabric you'll sew the sew on the darts you'll sew the front and back together you'll insert the zip don't put the waistband on just yet so you have that done and then with your lining fabric again you'll cut out the front and back using the same pattern pieces put the darts in so the side seams and then at the center back seam obviously you won't be putting a zip in because the main skirt's got the zip you just have to make sure that the center back seam is sewn up as far as the bottom of the zip on your main fabric so you can kind of line them up together and just make sure that you've sewn that center back seam up so that it is in line with where the end of the zip is once you've done that then you're going to sew the two skirts together and you're going to baste them together around the very top edge of the skirt here and that's where they'll be attached so below that they will be separate so they'll be separate at the hem they'll be separate at the side seams as well like they'll be able to move independently they will be attached together at the zip opening as well but we're going to come to that later so what you have to do is orientate your pieces so that the wrong side of the main fabric is facing the wrong side of the lining fabric because you want the the sort of outside bit of your darts to be like touching your body if you think about it you want that to be you want the sort of flappy bit of the inside of the darts to be like right on the inside of the skirt so that's how you have to sort of layer them up and you're going to match all of the landmarks so pin the side seams pin where the darts are as well and when it comes to the center back opening what you'll need to do is just fold back the lining section by the seam allowance sort of turn it back on itself and pin it in there and then at the moment the rest of the lining opening will just sort of be loose to the zip for the time being so there's a couple of options here of how you actually finish that zip opening off and attach it to the lining you can either just hand sew it so you would pin it on as I've described so far and then you would just use an invisible ladder stitch to sew the, that fold in the centre back of the lining to the zip tape so you wouldn't see that on the outside of the garment obviously so that would just hold it in place there. The other option that you could do is now that you've got it in place and you've got it pinned all round the top it's easier to see sort of what way things are going to sit so you can reach in from the bottom of the skirt and pinch the seam allowances together so the seam allowance of the lining at the centre back seam and the seam allowance of the main fabric as well where the zip tape is and then you can pin them together and you can sew them together on the machine with a standard zip foot just so that you can get close enough to the teeth you don't want to be like really close but you want to be fairly close so the standard zip foot is good for that section and then you just want to sew down as close as you can get to the bottom of the zip so you can do that on both sides and then you'll still have a little section at the bottom of the zip that won't be sewn on by the machine you can either hand sew that down if you really wanted to I just left mine um, because I thought it would be fine you know it was, a, it was attached enough it wouldn't sort of get in the way anymore and then at the top of the zip once that's sewn in you're just sort of making the fabric will kind of naturally sort of sit together flat and you can pin it again at the top um, edge there where the top of that zip opening is then you're just going to sew all the way around the top of the skirt to hold those two layers of fabric together holding the lining and the main fabric together and you want to do that within the seam allowance so afterwards then when you come to attach the waistband on you're basically just treating those two layers of fabric as one just pretend that they're one so you sew the waistband on and then when it comes to the section of either folding the waistband over and pinning it in place like you do in, in this garment here because the waistband is a fold over one or as I said in the beginning if the waistband has got two sections like an outside waistband and an inside waistband same same kind of principle when you bring that inside section of the waistband down 
that will cover all of the raw edges and it will sort of sandwich the lining fabric in as well so it just conceals it all and it just you know it just helps to sort of hold it in place even more and just makes everything really nice and seamless so it just looks like the lining is coming out of the waistband basically and then you just secure your waistband down in whatever way you're going to do whether you're hand sewing it or you're stitching in the ditch or machine sewing it or whatever and then when it comes to hemming it it is important that the hem of the lining is shorter than the main fabric because you don't want it hanging out the bottom. So I just doubled the hem allowance in this sample here. So on the main skirt, the hem allowance was an inch. So then on the lining fabric, I just made it two inches. So I just folded it up an inch and then I folded it up another inch. So it meant that it was a whole inch shorter. And then you can see as I sort of hold it up and hang it down, um, the, the lining fabric doesn't stick out the bottom, which is what you want. So the lining fabric that I used in this sample was some of our sand washed Cupro lining and it is, it is nice and sort of shiny and slippery. So it's good if you're going to be wearing a garment with tights or leggings or something and you don't want the garment to stick to that. That, sort, that type of lining will sort of move over it nice and freely. But if you were making a summer version of the skirt and say like a lightweight linen or something, but you felt like it needed a bit of a lining and you were lining it with just cotton lawn, for example, and then exactly the same principles would apply. So it doesn't mean that you have to, just because you're lining something, it doesn't mean that you have to use that sort of classic slippery acetate or polyester or cupro lining or whatever, whatever base of lining you're using, that kind of slippery one. It can just be that you're using any type of lining and obviously the same sort of method would apply. So I hope you found that useful and it's made inserting a lining much easier than what you might think it is. You're basically just really making two skirts and then joining them the waistband. If you've got any questions at all, then please feel free to leave a comment below or if you need a quick answer, if you've got any questions about stock availability or anything like that, then you can always email the shop and the G&G team and I are always more than happy to help. The email address is info at guthrie-gani.co.uk. I'll link to the blog post that goes with this video in the description and in that blog post you can find links to all of the fabrics that I've mentioned and details of the pattern that I've used as well and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye